Hey there, I'm Annie Dickerson, and on behalf of the whole Good Egg Investments team, I wanted to welcome you to another episode of the Life and Money Show. And boy, do we have a really special conversation for you today. On today's show, I'm talking with Jen Briggs. She's the host of the podcast, The Whole Shebang. And in this conversation, we talk about so much the journey of unfolding, how to integrate masculine and feminine energies, corporate burnout, authenticity, vulnerability, awakening, going within to find your true self, and so much more. It is all of the stuff that I love to geek out about these days. You know, I used to, back when we first started uh, Good Egg Investments, I was always geeking out about real estate. And while I still love real estate and I'm super passionate about helping people build their wealth and reach financial independence and do the things that they love, I'm realizing, as Jen talks about on this show, is there's a difference between the way that we've been taught to reach our goals, which is set a goal, let's say it's financial, I want to reach this amount of um, total wealth or net worth, or I want to reach this amount of passive income so that I can quit my job and, and do whatever it is that I want to do. And then you work backwards from there and you say, okay, well, that means I need a job that makes X amount and I need to save this amount every month. And then I need to invest this amount. And from that, then we wait, let's say five years, 10 years, 20 years, we keep snowballing that wealth. Then we get to that point check off that box, and then we move on to the next thing. That's traditionally how goals work, right? So you set a goal, then you work backwards from there. You reach the goal and you're you're like, yay, celebration, on to the next thing. But what I've realized through my journey of discovery, especially over the last year, two years, I think it's been probably four years now that I've been on this path is I've realized there's so much more to that. It's not just about what's on paper. It's not just about reaching the goal, the outward external goal, but it's about so much more than that. About It's about what goes on in the inside, about how you're feeling along the way and about the fulfillment that you're actually going for. And that goal might represent the fulfillment or that feeling that you're trying to get to, some aspect of that. And sometimes the goal and that feeling are in alignment. And that's amazing. Those are the best moments. But often we get to that goal, we do all this work to get to that goal, and then we realize, wait, wait a second. (laughs) This doesn't give me that feeling that I actually wanted. And if this has happened for you, if you're nodding your head as you are listening to me talking about this, you're not alone because this has happened to me as well. This is why I'm so passionate about bringing this aspect of the the journey to our conversations about financial independence, about wealth, about investing, about your finances, about living a life by design, because it's not just about the financial piece. It's about so much more than that. And I think so much, so many of us get caught in that cycle of what is, what is in my bank account? What does my net worth look like? And we abandon so many other parts of ourselves that aren't outwardly or immediately or extrinsically rewarded. And so this conversation is about so much of that. And this is so fitting because I'm, as I'm recording this, I'm coming off of a weekend with five of my best friends from the college days back when I was at Penn. And we went to Miraval in Tucson, which is this, uh, it's a well being resort, let's call it. Um, and we spent the last four days there. And um, these are friends that I've known since college. So they've, I, and I just turned 40. We were celebrating my 40th birthday. And so we've known each other for over 20 years. And yet there are parts of myself that I haven't shown them and parts of themselves that I discovered for the first time. And that's this part of this journey of authenticity, of self-discovery, of feeling into what you're trying to create, not just going for that external goal. And 
oh, I, I could probably spend an entire episode just talking about this experience that we had. Okay. But I'll give you just this little snippet, which is that uh, we started off the weekend with, you know, Miraval has, is one of those resorts that has all this programming. So they, they have all these different offerings each day. Some are, you know, a lot of them are spiritual related, transformation related, kind of giving you the time and space while you're there um, in this luxurious environment to go deeper, to put your phone aside, to put your work aside, to really do that inner work. And they have a lot of different classes and workshops and um, different offerings to support you in that. And one of the things that I was most looking forward to was this equine experience, essentially this horse therapy. And I had seen in in various you know social media or in movies. There was a a movie I watched. Um, I think as a teenager, it's called um, Twenty Eight Days with Sandra Bullock. And in it, as she's going through um, recovery from addiction, she um, there's this one exercise with a horse where they go and they're trying to, they're supposed to try to lift the uh, one of the horse's hooves to clean the bottom of the, the hoof. And it's not just about that act of doing that. It's about so much more than that because you have a horse is a very intuitive creature. And so they know if you are fully there with them or if you trust yourself or not. And, and so I was really curious to try this for myself and see if I could do that thing. If I could get the horse to trust me and lift its hoof for me. Um, so I was really curious about that, but I stepped into the ring and I got to tell you, it wasn't about the horse. It was about so much more because through just being in that ring, it brought up these nerves in me and our guide, he kind of, um, kind of started to dig in a little bit. How are you feeling in this moment? And I said, well, I'm kind of nervous. I don't, I don't know what to expect. And we had a conversation about that. Where to, where was I feeling it in my body? And then um, really giving the space for me to honor my feelings in that moment, which I think in, in daily life, we stuff so much of that down because there's just not enough time. We got things to do, places to be. And so I really was able to connect with myself in that moment. And then here's the thing. I went to go lift the horse's hoof. And guess what? I followed all of the steps that he said, bent at the waist. I went down. I squeezed firmly. Um, nothing happened. I tried again. Nothing happened. I retraced the steps in my head. Nothing happened. The horse stood there resolute on all fours. There was no chance he was going to pick up his hoof for me. No chance. So then I asked for help. And I said, well, what do you recommend? What do you suggest? What can I do differently? And he said, again, he went back to, well, how are you feeling? And there was so much in that moment. And I, you know, I was on display, right, in front of my closest friends and I had this fear of, oh my gosh, what are they going to think of me? I should have been able to pick up this hoof, but you know they're they're watching me, they're seeing me fail. And I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm feeling disappointed. It took me actually a long time to even get to the feelings because I kept saying things. He was like, nope, that's a thought, that's a thought. And finally, I got to this feeling of sadness, of grief, of disappointment that I wasn't a natural. Can you believe that? How silly is that? I thought that this thing with, I'm not a horse person. I thought I would walk up to a horse and I would be so naturally good at this thing I've never done that I was disappointed when it didn't work for me. And how, how silly, right? When we think about that, but how often in life are we doing those things where we're like, oh, so scared to look bad at this thing that I've never done before. <laughs> of course, right? And then it it makes us play smaller and be less of ourselves. And so ultimately what happened was um, Tyler suggested, well, why don't you try it again? But rather than trying to be a natural, just have fun with it. Be playful with it. As I said, playful? I could do that. 
In fact, that's part of myself that I love the one of the parts of myself that I love the most. And so I went back up to the horse. His name was Tater Tot. <laughs> and I took our guide Tyler's advice and went up to the horse. And I was like, come on, it's you and me. I just need you to lift this one hoof. And I went up to him and I squeezed. And guess what? He picked up his hoof just a tiny bit, like it was off the ground, like he was standing on tiptoes uh, on that one hoof, but it was still on the ground. And the goal was to get him to pick it up all the way so that the full leg, well, the, the full, I don't know horse anatomy very well, but the <laughs> the whole like, I guess, calf area of the that one leg was in my hand. So basically he would be depending on me for balance because he would be standing on three legs and I would be holding that one leg. And so we weren't there yet. He only picked it up a little bit. And I said, okay, I see some movement that's better. And instead of going back to my serious self and saying, well, let me repeat the steps. This time I took a different approach. And I said, okay, come on. I went back up to Tater Tot's head and I was talking to him. And I said, come on, it's you and me. We got this. This is simple. You do this all the time. I'm here trying to experience this for the first time. And, you know, we got this. And I went back down. And that third time, guess what? He lifted his leg. Super simple. All I had to be was my full self. I had to bring those parts of me that I was afraid of to that situation. And that's really ultimately what we're talking about here today is so many of us have done very small things along the way to turn away from ourselves, to stamp out parts of ourselves, to stuff it down because it didn't fit into this neat little box of whom we wanted to be and whom we thought others wanted us to be. So in this conversation, we're going to dig into all of that. Because with some simple tweaks, some simple things that you can start to think about and integrate into your daily life, you can start to come back home to yourself, your full self, your true self. And just like Tater Tot knew that I wasn't being my full self, if if there are parts of yourself that you're hiding, that you are stuffing down, that you're not in touch with, That means you're not playing full out and you're not being that full authentic version of yourself. You're playing small. And so it might hold you back from things in your life like picking up a horse's hoof. (laughs) So that's what we're going to cover in this conversation. Thank you for allowing me to share that little tidbit from uh, my weekend, which um, which was amazing. Um, before we dive in, one last thing is, you know, um, when you're going on these, this journey of self-discovery, whether you're just at the beginning or you are well into it and you're loving finding different modalities, or you're really scared, you've done maybe a little bit of work, but you're scared to go deeper. One of the things that I find most helpful is having a community of people around me to support me who care about some of the same things, but more than that, they care about me and who I am and supporting me wherever life takes me. And so I'm talking about the power of community and the power of finding your tribe. And here at Good Egg Investments, we are big into community. And so we've created what we call our Good Egg Investor Club. It's our community of people Um, who are seeking something beyond themselves, whether financially or in their lives. And what we do is we invest together. We invest in apartment buildings, in hotels, so that you can start to um, grow your wealth and um, build build a better financial future for yourself and your family. And so if that resonates with you, we, um, we invite you to join us. Uh, you can go to goodegginvestments.com slash invest to learn more about the Good Egg Investor Club and see if it's right for you. All right. With that, let's dive into my conversation with Jen Briggs. Jen, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you, Annie, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. 
I couldn't be more thrilled about the conversation we're about to have. Now, as we're, you know, you and I met um, on a magical retreat to Scotland not that long ago. I've talked about that a little bit on this show, but, you know, we got to know each other a little bit during that trip. Um, But in the days and weeks after, as I've started following you and learning more about you, I've realized we're so much more aligned and deeply connected than I thought. Mm-hmm. In fact, when I um, I went to your website, and it may have been your previous website, but I went and I read this quote that really resonated with me. For a long time, I had this quote up in my sort of my makeup corner and read it every day as I was getting ready. And it was an Anais Nin quote. And in it, she says, um, your life shrinks or or expands in proportion to your courage. Mm-hmm. And I think for the last many years as I as we've built this business and really tried to expand our impact that was it was really resonating with me that mm-hmm. you know if I could step up and I could do this thing that I'm scared of then we can expand the business and we can ripple out our impact. Mm-hmm. But over the last, you know, I would say the last year especially as I've been doing more of this deep inner work, I've noticed in the mornings when I was getting ready, I was like, that doesn't resonate as much as it Mm. used to. Mm. And when I came across this quote on your website, which I've read before, but for whatever reason this time, oh, it rang deep in my soul. And in fact, right after that, I printed it out and I've now changed that quote. So now it says, <laughs> and the quote is, and the day came when the risk mm-hmm. to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took mm-hmm. to blossom. And I know this is a very meaningful quote to you. And so let's start there because I know you've been on this huge and deep journey of self-discovery and transformation. And mm-hmm. I wanted, I, I want you to take us back to the moment that started you on this trajectory, because I know like many of our, our listeners, our audience, you probably started off on a path that was very, quote, normal. Mm-hmm. And you, you probably did all the things you were supposed to do, but mm-hmm. something happened that changed your traje- trajectory. So take us to that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that um, foundation here. Yeah, it was, let's see, 2017, May of 2017, so four, seven years ago, that my father passed away. And I, I kind of, I remember being younger and thinking about what it would be like when I lost someone close to me. I sort of had that fear of like losing, losing the people I loved, um, coincidentally or not, I had lost my brother two years prior to my dad passing. And my brother had a life of angst. I would say he struggled with mental health and drug abuse issues. And the grieving of my brother essentially was throughout his life, throughout my life. And so when he passed, it was like we all knew it was coming, but we didn't know when or how. And that there wasn't shock there. When my father passed away two years after that, there was a kind of jolt in that. Um, I don't know if I would describe it as an awakening at the time, but I think at the time it it really caused me, and maybe it was the two of those things combined, but it really caused me to pause my pause my life, pause my my, you know, how I was reflecting, how I was moving. Like you said, I had moved through life and did all of the things, right? I went to college, went to graduate school. I had got married. I had three kids. I bought the house. I had the career, did all of the things. I had the success. I had the, the, the money sort of at that point, although we went through some other challenges. But when my father passed away, it was almost as if something in me mutated. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I had this moment of, it's it's so cliche, but wow, life is short. And if, it, and if I get the blessing of having a long life, how do I really want to live it? And that first question began to transmute into a domino, a cascading effect of questions. Well, well if I don't want to live my life this way, how do, how do I want to live it? And why don't I want to live my my life this way? Well, really at the core, when I peeled all of that away, it was 
who am I? <laughs> and I remember calling my mom as I was kind of working through this process and being like, mom, I just, I've lost myself along the way. I abandoned myself in lots of little ways to comply with a religious structure, to comply with a societal structure, to to fit into a marriage that was good, but wasn't really in alignment with the core of who I was. And I, so I called my mom just kind of like, you know, I'm searching, like, who am I really? Who am I at the core? And my mom just responded with, um, you are who you've always been. And there was mm. something about the way she said that, that was like, mm. all right, who have I always been? Who is really at the core of that? And so that led me on a journey of connecting, coming back home, really connecting with self. And as I began to get more and more connected with the truth of who I was, that's when it took the courage, right? Because it was like the, the risk to remain tight in that bud, the bud that I had lived in my whole entire life was more painful and more great than the courage that it took to start shedding and letting go. Um, but that was scary. <laughs> it, was so, mm -hmm. it was scary to start letting go. Yeah. 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 You mentioned, you mentioned that you were, you had abandoned yourself in many little ways. And I think that's really, the reason that that resonates with me is because I think so many of us don't realize that we're doing that. We put blinders on. I did this. And for many years, I wouldn't have said I abandoned myself. I would have said, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm building this thing or I'm, I'm, you know, I'm having kids. I'm pouring into them. And so tell us about that. What do you mean by you abandoned yourself in all these little ways? How did you know that? Hmm. You know, hindsight, they say hindsight's twenty twenty for a reason, right? I mean, I can't, like you said, I couldn't really see it in the moment. But as I started to gain clarity, as I started to really align with more of who I was, looking back, I'll just give some some little examples. I it's I I'm like I'm gonna age myself here, <laughs> but but I felt like <laughs> right oh there my with God. You. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm the runaway bride, but I wasn't about the bride. It was like I'm the one sitting here going, how do I like my eggs? <gasps> what music you do have, I like? Oh <laughs> I, I, I got to stop you there because I haven't thought about that movie in I don't know how long. I literally was talking about that exact scene just yeah. like two days ago with Marianne, who is also on the retreat in Scotland yeah. with us because we were talking about the same thing and how, yeah. you know, in the movie, she didn't know how she liked her eggs. She liked it. However, the man she was with liked yeah. their eggs. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, it's such a simple... Her, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a simple thing, but I remember it, it was actually, I went on this, um, my first solo vacation ever to Colorado after a lot of change had happened. At this point, I, I moved through a divorce. I changed my career. Like I really transformed almost every fast of my life. And I was working on vision. You know, what now, what is my vision? What is my next chapter? And I took a four day trip to Colorado. It was the first time I've gotten away by myself. And it was a really poignant moment. I was, I'd rented a car. I needed to get gas. I, I pulled up to the gas station and I was like, I get to get snacks. It was actually my assistant at the time. She said, enjoy the snacks on your road trip. And I, I pulled into the gas station. I was like, I get to get snacks what snacks do I even want? You know, cause I'm like yes. getting my kids snacks and I'm, yep. mm -hmm. and then I get back in the car and I'm like, I get to listen to whatever music I want. Mm. What music do I want? And my former husband, I'll just say, he's a great man. We get along while we, you know, there's nothing, I have nothing negative to say about him. He was a jazz musician. And so just, and I used to work in a church as a church musician. And so it was either jazz music or church music. And I was like, <laughs> It's neither of those things anymore. So like, mm. what what do I want to listen to? And it was in those little ways that I started to learn to actually ask myself, what do I want to eat right now? What does my body want to eat right now? And um, what do I really believe? Like, 
what do I really believe about my faith? What do I, you know, it was the little things that became a gateway to the bigger questions as I sort of titrated to this like new normal of feeling safe within myself and trusting myself. That's a big part of this process, right? Like to have courage to undo old beliefs or realize where you've abandoned yourself also requires building a new relationship with yourself where you can trust yourself to step into what is more true, what is more you. And, um, you know, I'm continuing to uncover ways that I've abandoned myself. And that does feel maybe like a heavy way to put it, but uh, maybe like a light version of that is um, making compromise or living in ways that are just a, su subtly mediocre to what I really am. So, you know, I'm dating somebody new and we're talking a lot about what, ooh, I don't know if we can go here in your podcast. <laughs> can we go here? Let's, can I go there? Let's do it. Yeah. You can edit it out if you want, but um, Sounds great. <laughs> really also just diving into what I believe about sexuality. What are my, mm -hmm. where is my liberation there? Where is my freedom there? What did I used to believe and why? And where is the sacred? Is the sacred in everything? So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm continuing as I'm evolving to find ways that, that I complied with things to fit, you know, to fit in. Yes a group, a structure, a, a, you know, fit in, you, you name it. We all have ways that we, in my working world, and sometimes we need to do that, right? Like in, I was, I was a pretty visible leader in the position that I was in. And so I needed to fit in order to represent that company. And, um, and in so doing, I don't even, maybe in that way, I wouldn't say I necessarily abandoned myself, but I wasn't fully steeped in like the fullness of who I am. And now I feel like I have a more freedom to do more of that. I'm so glad you brought that in because, you know, that I can relate so deeply with what you're saying, because it's been so much of my journey too, because starting this business, this real estate investing business, right? I'm a very serious person, Jen. I can't be talking about all of these things. <laughs> I can be going on spiritual retreats. Oh, I got to keep that closeted. The first yeah. time I went on this erotic feminine retreat, mm -hmm. I was like, oh no. I mean, it was powerful, mm -hmm. but I can't share. I got to segment that out from right. what I do in daily right. life. What mm -hmm. if my investors found out? What would they think of me? <laughs> would they still put their money with me? But of course, it's so silly now that I think about it because obviously they see me, they want to see me as a whole person. And yeah. so do all the people around me. And yeah. even, you know, before we started recording, we were talking about this past weekend. I had spent at Miraval with my five closest friends from college mm -hmm. celebrating my 40th birthday. Mm -hmm. And on the first day that we were there, and these are, mind you, these are women who have known me since we were 18 years old. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. over 20 years of our lives, we've been friends. We've seen each other through marriages, through kids, through jobs, through self-discovery. And still, there are, I discovered that I was scared to share so many parts of my life mm -hmm. with them, the closest friends of mine. And mm -hmm. on the first day that we were there, they said, well, Annie, it's your birthday. We're going to do what you want to do. What do you want to do? And I had planned an itinerary. But in that moment, when we didn't have something to do, I was like, what do I want to do right now? We're staying at this beautiful place. And it was such a simple thing. I was like, do I want to go in the pool right now? Do I want to mm -hmm. sit inside and talk? Do I want to have a snack? And it was such a simple thing, but my default would have been, oh, I'm easy. I can do whatever. What do you guys want to do? Mm -hmm. Right? And even that is a way of abandoning ourselves. And it's it takes courage to step into mm -hmm. that moment and just, wait a second, I want to do this. And mm -hmm. I... You know, it doesn't matter to me if other people may not want to do that right now. That's okay. But mm -hmm. I want to be true to myself and I'm going to hop in the pool right now. And that mm -hmm. is what I did, by the way. Ultimately, I was like, it was nine o'clock at night and the stars were out. 
And I said, I'm going to get in the pool. And everybody got in the pool with me and we had the best time. I love that. I think along those lines, that sort of, as you were sharing about that, that there is also this place of like owning our desire. And to your point about the feminine, it's a lot of the work that I've been doing. All of this is closely related, but that's like knowing, knowing what my desire is and where it comes from. It's the first step is not abandoning self. And then it's going, oh, this is my desire. And finding this sort of delicious space of holding that desire and owning that and then receiving, which is, I found in my work and working with others, one of the biggest challenges, it tends to be, okay, now I know maybe what I want, but do I think I'm worthy of receiving it? Am I comfortable enough? Can my nervous system handle receiving what my friends have for me, what the universe has for me, what life has, has gifted me. Um, and I think that's a lot of times what keeps us from, it's a piece of that courage, you know, of the mm-hmm. unfolding, but then the reception is, is an additional yes. piece of that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell me about the feminine and the masculine, because I know mm. this is a big part of your work. And this is mm-hmm. a part that I am starting to discover. I think for Gosh, so many years I was out of touch with the feminine and I actively stuffed it down. I didn't have a single oh, yeah. pink thing in my closet because I thought <laughs> that's too weak. That represents the feminine in me and I don't want any part of that. I am all about achieving and yeah. the masculine, like I, I'd i re- growing up, I would much rather have been a tomboy than a girly mm. girl. And I worked mm-hmm. so hard at that perception and that identity. But now I've started to embrace that both sides in me, the masculine mm-hmm. and the feminine. Tell me about that in your work, because I know that's such a huge part of what you do and how you help people to create this transformation and to mm-hmm. find their true authenticity. Yeah, thank you for asking. It's become... I, I I originally said like a fascination and then I was like, oh my God, this is an obsession. And now um, it's a passion. It's so many things to me. And I think a, a big part of my dharma and, you know, there are lots of different words that we can use for it. And very transparently, I've sort of struggled around what language to use because, because I don't want to uh, exclude people from the conversation or isolate them. And so I'll just start by saying when I refer to masculine and feminine, it is not gendered. It's not male and female. It's qualities, like you said, that we all have within us. And for people that are new to that conversation, maybe an easy way to think about it is right brain, left brain. So left is logical and linear and achieve achievement oriented and goal oriented. And, um, and right brain is sort of the creative, connective, vulnerable, sensual side of things. And, you know, I think it's very, very common because of uh, the way our society is set up that we, we've been rewarded to function in our left brain and or in our, our logical masculine energy. We've been rewarded financially. We've been rewarded in promotions. Um, you know, and I think that this is a part of our society's evolution that a lot of the structures have been typically, they were male created male-led masculine, and now I am kind of equating it to gender, but historically speaking, that's what it was. And then and then women were entering that world that was ma- masculine forward. And in order for us to succeed in that world, we needed to fit and self-abandon. And, and honestly, I, you know, the more that I'm diving into this work, I feel like it's it, a lot of men have done the same thing. They have an inner feminine that they've felt that they've needed to abandon to succeed in that structure in that world, um, which is don't be too emotional. The, the feminine's biggest wound is that she'll be too much, too emotional, too sensitive, too soft. The masculine's biggest wound is that that the, the, they won't be enough. You know, I won't have enough to succeed. I won't have enough power, enough of this. And so the healthy version of that is really bringing union to the inner masculine, inner feminine, so that we can show up more whole. And it's, you said that earlier. And what I think we're at right now is a sort of a precipice. And whether people are into astrology or not, we are entering a new era, the Aquarian age, which is um, more feminine dominant, which is more focused on connection and collaboration and synarchy instead of hierarchy. And so 
How do we succeed as a team? How do we um, collaborate instead of compete? And and that is, I'm I'm talking to people who are literally sort of waking, they're waking up one day and going, wow, there's something in me that just can't do it this way anymore. I just can't do it the old way anymore, which isn't to say that we throw out all of the old systems and structures. To me, I'm using the word reintegrate or remember or uncover the feminine so that we're bringing that back in to a union that'll happen within. And that goes back to, you know, if I start with me, where have I, like you said, shoved the feminine down? So my emotions are too much. So instead of feeling my emotions, I'm going to shut them off, compartmentalize them, numb them. But in doing that, I'm also then quieting my intuition. And intuition is a huge part of the feminine. And intuitive power to me is otherworldly. It's connected to a intelligence that that we can't logic our way to. But if we could be like animals, because we are animals, and connect to that intuition in our business decisions, in our relationship patterns, in our what snacks do I want? How do I want my eggs? What is what food does my body want? That's a real one. What intuitively, what food does what nutrition does my body need right now? And then also bring in structure and systems to it. It's a pretty freaking beautiful marriage. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't I couldn't agree more. And, and yeah. you know, it's those man, it's those little things, right? It comes out. And I'm curious to 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 hear more about your work with your clients and your audience and how you're seeing this. But you know, I remember just a few months ago, I was I kept having these um these conversations with mentors and coaches and they they kept telling me, you need to let your kids see you cry. Mm-hmm. And I had never, you know, my kids are now 12 and 8. They've never seen me cry. Not necessarily, not that I was trying to hide hide it from them, but I just, I don't cry often because I wasn't in touch with that part of myself. Mm-hmm. And so when I did cry, I'd kind of go in a corner, get it over with, get it out. Then I'd go back on, back to normal life. Mm-hmm. And so I held this loose intention that, okay, I'm not scared of that. I can let my kids see me cry. And I joked with them and I said, someday I'm going to watch a really funny or a really sad movie. And I'm just going to cry and you you guys are going to be there and we're going to check this thing off the off my list (laughs) and oh boy did the universe have different plans for me (laughs) oh and I had this very very intense week actually it was after um, another retreat not the Scotland retreat but a previous retreat with Karen Um, Mm -hmm. and uh, I thought I don't need this retreat. This is, I've already gone through a lot of this material. This, the topic of the retreat was upgrading your emotional algorithm. And I thought, Mm. this is, this is beyond me. I've already done this work. Mm. And the universe decided to use that to Mm. hand me my hat. (laughs) And so in the week after, so many things, not just in business, but in life, melted down all at once. And it culminated in this moment, which I've talked about on the uh, the podcast. And for anybody who wants to see a picture of this, it's also on our Instagram. I, I took my kids to get um, checked for lice while we were traveling in Portland. Not only did they have lice, I had lice. And so we did the whole treatment. I had my whole head oiled up And in the plastic shower cap, meanwhile, I was trying to make two big wires and the bank was not cooperating with me. They had just gone through this acquisition and they couldn't find my wires. I was sitting in the seat getting all this oil in my hair and it was a whole day of this, you know, it's that kind of stress that you have a lot on your to-do list. No problem. You sit down and you knock it out one by one. That's a different kind of stress. This kind of stress was 
totally outside of my control. Mm -hmm. Calling the bank and getting transferred from one person to another, knowing that if I didn't get the wire out before the wire cutoff time, that our partners would lose millions of dollars in this mm -hmm. real estate deal. Our investors would lose out on this opportunity. It was a lot riding on this. And it took mm -hmm. that to get me to this state of this ugly cry mm. that I was finally like, wow, I've gone, it took mm. me this, this far to mm. be able to get to and access this level of emotion. Mm. And it was also not only the first time that my kids saw me cry, it was the first time I let my husband hold me mm. while I was crying. And so many dams broke that day mm. and you know it was just it's beautiful I think when we abandon these parts of ourselves it's not so much in the moment because it's just a tiny like you said it's a tiny you just turn away a little bit mm. but over time that that path gets deeper and deeper and you walk so far away from who you truly are yeah that it's so much harder. It takes something like lice at a bed. I had to go down to the bank <laughs> in the lice cap and chase down $5 million oh wire. It's an That's amazing how. story. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah. It's beautiful. Well, and I imagine for you, you know, I think about as you're sharing about that, I'm thinking why, you know, I get the question like, well, why would I want to feel those emotions? Because it's easier to control, yeah. right? That's the, mm -hmm. that's the masculine in us. It's actually a wounded masculine in us that wants to control that and is afraid of what happens if we lose that. And, and to me, there is a lot of power in not just emotion, but into, in our intuition and in our ability to flow, I think it was Deepak Chopra, Sh Chopra, he talks about this in relation to abundance, so you're probably familiar with it. And it also feels similar to me in our emotions that we're meant to circulate, that abundance meant, is meant to circulate. And when we hold, 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 it, we coagulate and we, we stop up, like you said, it's a dam that holds us up. And I feel that, and I saw this in my own life, when I was afraid to experience what I perceived as pain, so whether it was sadness or grief or fear or anxiety, and I stopped that up, you become a less uh, less sensitive tuning fork, right? Or you become a less sensitive creature. And so when I stop that up, I stop up everything that is the reverse of that. So to what degree I'm able to experience that that feeling is to the degree that I can experience joy and pleasure and gratitude and freedom. And, um, and that feels really scary because it, it all feels out of control, honestly. And if we're used to controlling everything within us and without us, then I, particularly that moment with my dad, I mean, when I first stepped into grief, that was I didn't really have a choice. Like grief kind of chased me down. Everything else I could control, but grief chased me down. And when I let the waves of that wash over and then the waves were beyond me, I was like, wow, okay, I lived. I didn't die. Like I, because I literally had a moment of like, will I survive this? It feels so huge in the moment. Um, and sometimes I feel that now with, with joy or with these, because I've worked so hard at freeing myself up, you, would, you and I would be an interesting pair we'll like doing anything for the, <laughs> for a day because I'll walk around the lake and see a kid laughing and I'll tear up and I'm like, oh my gosh, Jennifer, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, and I now I'm kind of in this next phase of my own personal growth of, um, not bringing in the the masculine to control that, but you know, within myself, there still needs to be a framework to hold all that the feminine is, which is everything that moves, lives, breathes, and is wild and free and all and all of that. So, um, good job for allowing that or let you know being there for it when it overcame you. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It, it was like the the waves washed over me, and all I could do was, uh, all I could do was surrender to the moment. I knew yeah. I had absolutely no control 
in that situation. All I could do was what I could do. And Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that it turned out well. And it, it was almost like a, you know, a, a cosmic joke at the end, because of course, right before the deadline and right before it was, oh, here it is. We've got the wire. You know, it's like everything was always going to be fine, but I had to go through that because this yeah. was my opportunity to get to that. Mm-hmm. That's so great. And s- you mentioned something else that I think that probably our listener probably perked their ears up at, or maybe it ruffled some feathers within them. So I want to dig back to this, this concept of awakening. This is a word that has come up a lot, I think, at least in in my spheres and may have come up for the listener and in their world. And I think people have different thoughts and different understanding about what awakening is and what it means. And some people may hear that word and be like, oh, that's not for me. That's too floofy. That's for, Mm -hmm. you know, those, the people in white who are all spiritual wearing beads. That's what they do. But tell me what awakening means for you, what you, maybe what you've seen in your life and Mm -hmm. maybe what you have seen with the people that you've worked with. Mm. This is so good. I don't know if I've been asked this question, so thank you. (laughs) Um, You know, awakening, the opposite of being awake is to slumber, right? And when I look back at my life pre that moment, again, in hindsight, I was walking through life in a bit of a slumber, slumber, right? I I was living in a way that was meeting the standards that I grew up with, right? So I'm doing this thing. I'm just like I had laid out earlier. I'm going to school. I'm having the kids. I'm getting married. I've got the house. I've got, I'm focusing on retirement. I'm doing the things. And to me, it 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 felt a little sleepy looking back. And at the time, it was all I knew, right? And and I think oftentimes when I look at myself or other people who have this this awakening that happens, you know, I think we used to call it, I, I'm, I'm going to say often I think it is sort of this midlife crisis slash chrysalis moment, right? Or, or a crisis in life that happens. You know, if you look at the cycle of transformation in any, we, we constantly are going through these cycles of transformation. You can see it in your business. You can see it in your personal life. You can, so just on a, on a non-spiritual level, disruption is what causes transformation. So we're going through like a healthy, normal cycle and something comes in and the crap hits the fan. And then we got to go, what is happening? And you can see that, you know, if your listeners are thinking of their business, when has that happened in their business? That usually causes an inward, okay, so we've got to stop and investigate. Why did this happen? What's happening? What's happening in the industry? What's happening in the marketplace? How can we shift? How can we transform? And then out of that, out of that inward journey, out of that inward chrysalis, um, something is new is born. So what's new that is born. And in that process, we can call it illumination. We can call it an aha. We can call it a a innovation in business. Um, So when I think about my life, my inner life, my inner world, not just my outer world and business, the awakening to me is, is being illuminated to something that, that I couldn't see before that, um, enlivens. <laughs> this is hard to put words to, you know, when you're not mm-hmm. talking about it in concrete, concrete terms, yes. but that, um, that I, I would say for me has enlivened me and caused me to experience life in more visceral sensorial ways. Um, whether that's, uh, whether that's being, it's really, uh, really ultimately about being more present too. So, so that instead of going through life on autopilot, I'm feeling the wind when I'm taking a walk. I'm hearing, I'm hearing actually the tonality in the wind. I'm, I'm really enjoying this first sip of my coffee instead of when I was at work 12 hours a day, like chugging coffee to get stimmed up. You know? <laughs> and now it's, it's like, let me be present in this moment and then awake to the reality of what that means. 
And also, and now this may be a little woo for some people, but I think awakening to, um, I'm just going to say a greater intelligence, you know, call it what you will, if it's God, if it's nature, if it's universe, if it's source, if it's higher self, but being more in tune. Um, I like to use the analogy of nature because we are nature. Our bodies are a universe. Our bodies are this intricately designed ecosystem. When one thing is off, it impacts everything. When, when everything's running, really high octane. It's really powerful. And we are a small part of this huge ecosystem that has this intricate design and ability to move, I believe. And there's a lot of things we could talk about with religiously, you know, but I, I don't intend to go there. But tuning into um, that higher intelligence to help us make the decisions and live the life by design that we want to live because we're a part of this wildly intricate ecosystem. So awakening to that, awakening to what that means, awakening to the power of life in that versus me just getting up, clocking in, clocking out, going to sleep, making money, getting up. You know, <laughs> that's slumber to me. <laughs> Did I answer the question? I, in the best way. And I want to add on I want to get on your perspective on this because my husband and I were just talking about this this morning. This concept of, you know, you have to have that moment when the crap hits the fan and you, you're you like, okay, I don't want this anymore. Or this has awoken something within me that I want to find another path or try a new thing. And so as a mother, and I think about this, right, with, with my kids, and I think as a mother, especially these days, you want to protect them from everything. You want the best for them. And I'm thinking, I'm learning all these strategies. Let me teach them to them so that they will never have these wounds and these traumas. Mm -hmm. And of course, I know intellectually, no, they need to have that. Mm -hmm. So your kids, <laughs> how old are your kids? It's 18, 16, and 13. Okay. So they're, mm -hmm. oh, they're right in the thick of it and starting that mm -hmm. young adulthood. And yeah. so as you go through this journey for yourself, what's your perspective on their own journeys and what do you hope for them? Mm. I love this question so much because I've thought, I've thought about it a lot. And I think, um, you know, my, my mom and dad did a great job raising me. I, I'm not complaining about how I grew up, but I think one thing that I wish that would have been driven home with me was that I have everything I need to make the decisions in life that I need to make. And so in that, when I look at my own daughters, the biggest lesson that I want to drive home to them is that they're empowered to find their tools, their way of operating. They're, you know, they're uniquely designed. Their, their way of making decisions isn't going to be the way that I make decisions because, you know, I'm I'm a, a real sacral kind of gut decision maker. My oldest is not that. She she needs to ride the waves of her emotion and look at the data. And then when she's in a neutral place, make the decision. So it's really, for me, understanding that um, it, inevitably, because when I look at all of life, again, if you come back to nature and the cycle of transformation, things must die before new things can be born. Like, and in that there is always pain, like there just isn't a way around it. So it's not about helping them avoid pain. It's helping them navigate through pain because the way out is through. So how do they get through that? And how can they gain that relationship of trust with themselves so that they can, they can know that they have the ability to navigate life's decisions. And, and when they do, I, here's another belief that I've, I've come to, which is, I really don't believe that there are failures in life. I think that the fail, the thing that we perceive as failures are there to give us feedback. And it's, it's just like, I was never an athlete. I always love to use analogies that I don't have any experience with. It's just Same. works out great. Same. <laughs> it works yes. out great. But I'm like, okay, throw me a pitch, throw me the same pitch over and over and I'm going to miss it. And then I'm going to go, okay, 
what was I doing? How can I adjust my form? How can, you know, the people that are athletes listening would know, like, here's where you make the adjustment in order to hit the ball as it's, you know, the way it's coming to you right now. So I didn't fail. You know, there's top famous quotes about Thomas Edison. Like he didn't fail. It just took him like 10,000 tries to get a light bulb to work. None of that was failure. That was all data. It was all information. And so in any of those points of pain for our kids or for ourselves, that look like a mistake. I'm both learning about, I'm learning about how to hit the ball. I'm learning about how to, how to navigate life. And I'm also learning about myself in that moment. So then in the moment I can go, well, looking back, why did I, why did I quote unquote make that mistake? Oh, I was afraid that if I did it this other way, I wouldn't fit in. Well, why were you afraid that you wouldn't fit in? You know, so I'm, accustomed to kind of now I'm going to go a few layers deep and ask myself, well, what was, what was that really about? And I'm going to let that inform me so that again, I can come back to making decisions that are most in alignment with myself and that are not Mm self-abandoning. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful thing that not only are you helping to shepherd your kids through this and help them to navigate their own journeys, but also that you're such an inspiration to them. They've seen you go through this transformation. They've seen me cry more times than I can count. I'll tell you that. (laughs) There you go. go. And, you know, they've seen you through this and the transformation, who you were before and how you've stepped in to this fullest version of yourself. And you're still on that journey of transformation. You're not done. You're still going through it. You're still discovering new things. Mm-hmm. And so it's the same for them that they'll then have the courage to walk their own walk, whatever that I looks so. like mm-hmm. for them. Okay. Final question before we move into the last part of our show that okay. I have for you is, okay, so let's say the listener is listening to this and they're thinking, this all sounds amazing. I would love to go on a journey of self, of transformation and self-discovery, but I'm kind of stuck where I am. I love what you're saying, but what's the first step? This seems so like so much. Mm. What do I even do as a first step? What would you say to them? Mm. Um, that is just classic. You know, I think that's the classic stuck is like the biggest word that I would describe for myself where I was and then how did I get there? <clears throat> I like to start people on... Um, a really an intuitive vision. Um, how do we connect to a vision that is actually, I pull from self- subconscious. So um, there are tools that we can use that help to get at our subconscious. You know, 90 some percent of our brain is subconscious and the rest is logical forward thinking. And so we have very little access in our daytime thinking to the fullness of what actually is residing in our brains. So I like to take people through an exercise that is fully immersive to connect them with a vision of who they want to become. You know, I, in my work, um, got very, very great at setting goals of what I wanted to achieve. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's, what do I want to achieve? But then associated with that is who do I want to become? Or how do I want this life to feel? How do I want my days to feel? And so I really like to start with who do you want to be? How do you want to live? Okay, so we create a really vivid vision around that and we look at where are you at right now and what's the gap to getting there? How does this future version of you show up and what, how does she or he make decisions? How does he or she walk into the room and what's the delta between the two? And then we develop a really strategic plan to get from here to there. Um, and, I, you know, I think it coincides with the What do you want to achieve? It's not to abandon goals or sort of um, smart goals or ways that we can uh, attach metrics to it. But I think we've, well, I'll speak for myself. I I think a lot of us have done things sort of inside out. It's, well, what what do I want to get? And then who do I need to become to get that thing? And that is where we abandon ourselves, because it's like, I used this example once in a training I was leading. It's kind of a silly example. I was single at the time and I, not that I would necessarily want this, but I was like, well, let's just say I wanted to date an NFL player and I'm, I'm going, well, what do I want to get? Well, I want to get 
NFL player. Okay, so now I'm going to ask myself, well, who does that woman need to become to get the NFL player? And then I'm I'm totally bending and contorting and trying mm-hmm. to, you know, do the splits <laughs> like a cheerleader or something. <laughs> like, oh, and then I show up there and I'm going, oh, well, I'm not, I don't feel fulfilled in this relationship. Well, why? Because I'm not me. I'm trying mm-hmm. to be who I think you want me to be. Turns out that NFL player might not want who I think he, you know, like it's, it's just a total mismatch. And so we do that in life. We arrive at the thing, we hit the goal, we achieve the thing. And then often we're going, oh, well, why am I not happy? I, I got the thing. Why am I not happy? Well, because we're really probably many of us haven't done the work to go, well, who do I want to be? And how do I want to feel? And how do I want my days to look? And so it starts with creating that and then figuring out how to line that up with the business goals, with the leadership goals, with the metrics, um, and then peeling it back. Then we then we walk the path. Oh, wow. And what a fun example, but so powerful, right? Dating an NFL yeah. player. You're like, <laughs> okay, step one, I would do this. It's true. And you may yeah. get that thing. And a yeah. lot of people do achieve that thing that they want, mm-hmm. but then they turn around and they say, wait a second this doesn't feel right. This isn't actually what I wanted. So I love that. And this is a new practice for so many of us because we've been so ingrained to do it that way. Pick the goal, work backwards from there. But to think about who you want to become first and foremost and how you want to feel when you get there and then working from there. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. I'm taking so many notes because <laughs> I want to do that. Uh, that's because the journey that I'm on as yeah. well. And so I love that so much. Thank you for mm-hmm. sharing that. Of course. Yeah. So with that, we're going to move into the final part of our show, the Life & Money Show Spotlight Round. Jen, we're going to ask you three questions we ask all our guests. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. The first question is about your life and money. So share with us one thing that you're doing to live a meaningful and intentional life by design. Oh gosh. Some of this is going to be repetitive. (laughs) I'll just say that. Um, I think the most meaningful thing that I'm doing is making decisions throughout my day that are in alignment with who I am. Um, Mm -hmm. That is what's caught, you know, it is these, these little moments that are adding up to create that life. Uh, that may seem kind of simplistic, but that's how I have the life by design, life and fulfillment. Now I'm in a completely different career. I'm living in a different place. I'm dating a new man. It's it's all it's all happening because I'm making these little decisions that are in alignment throughout the day. So it's so simple, yet so it takes a lot to be able to do that. And you know, you may look the same on the outside. But as a result of all those little decisions, everything on the inside is completely different. And I think that's a great way to start too, is just those little things. What do I want in this moment? And Mm -hmm. um, continuing to come back to yourself again and again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful practice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Second question is about others' life and money. So share with us a life or money hack. And by hack, we loosely mean a tool, a tip, a resource, anything that has helped you with your life or your money along the way that you think might help the listener as well. Mm. I'm a broken record. This is along with making decisions that are in alignment, but I think the most powerful thing is developing a really close um, relationship with your intuition because Mm. our our innate ability to know the direction. And I'm talking about business decisions. You know, your probably your decision to reach out to me was fueled by intuition is my guess. And and who knows what this will lead to, right? There's just uh, on so many facets. And so this ability to, to and this takes courage because sometimes there are sort of odd things when you're like, man, my logic is telling me to do this thing. And and I'm just going to like throw this caveat out there. This is coming from, you know, a person who who has been in a high level world where everything is logical, but really learning how to integrate intuition throughout the day, whether it's how am I perceiving my team right now? I have a team in a room and I'm looking at them and going, something doesn't feel right here. So how do I in that moment tune into who needs what to lead them most effectively or 
who did I decide to reach out to to have a, as a guest on my podcast so that, um, and, and that leads to an opportunity in the future. There's this intelligent design. I think that as animals, as mammals, you look at animals and how they know when weather is coming and <laughs> all of the things. So developing the, a clear relationship with your intuition, knowing how your intuition speaks to you, um, whether that's cues in your body or um, signs, or again, this might feel woo to some people, but there's science even behind this, what our subconscious brain will connect to. And so tapping into our intuition and knowing how that intuition speaks to you as an individual. Oh, that's such a good one. And I can think so many examples. And this manifests for me a lot in events where I put my loose intention out there. And sometimes it's tens of thousands of people at events. And I follow where the thread takes me. I get into the right conversations and I find exactly the right person mm -hmm. that I was meant to cross paths with. And I think it, you know, when you give it a chance and you follow that thread, it can take you to so many magical places in life. Yeah, you agreed. Yeah. All right. Third and final question is around life and money and the world. So mm -hmm. share with us one thing that you're doing to help make the world a better place, whatever that means for you. Mm -hmm. I'll share two things if that's okay. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, it may seem simple, but I really have come back over and over to this. It's kind of maybe puts a a bow on the conversation here around this idea of starting with self that that because of how we're inter into uh, in, what's the word I'm looking for <laughs> intricately <laughs> because of uh -huh. how we're connected yep. because yes. of how we're connected to one another <laughs> and this intricate design. Mm -hmm when each of us as individuals really are connecting um, to the truth of who we are and showing up that way, we need every part to the puzzle. So my goal and my work is not to help to get people to be more like me. It's to help to get people to be more like them, mm -hmm. to find the truth of who they are. And, and so the way that I can best do that is to start with myself. So how can I make the world a better place? Well, if I start with being really authentic to who I am, and show up in the community that way, show up in my work that way, that inevitably has a ripple effect that that I sometimes I will see, many times I will see, and many times I won't. And so, and the obvious ripple effect for me is that that is my work, is to help people do the same. And so then how are they showing up that way? Um, I think it's really uh, invaluable that we start with self. And I think just as a bit of an aside, I don't know if this is a gender thing, if this is a mom thing, if this is a human thing, but I think there's a narrative around that being sort of selfish to like put ourselves first and figure out who we are and show up in ways that light us up. And it may go without saying, but I just, I just believe the opposite of that. I think because we're designed in a way to live life in a way that is both challenging and causes us to evolve and grow and also brings a lot of joy. And when we snap into alignment, we, we positively impact the whole ecosystem. So that'd be my first thing, starting with self. Um, my second thing is that I'm, I've really been tuning in lately to just God, I really do sound kind of hippie. As I'm hearing myself <laughs> say these things out loud. Amazing. But, um, yeah. My relationship to nature, because mm -hmm. of this, because I believe we are a reflection and a part of the natural world, I'm really tuning into what a relationship looks like. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, taking care of instead of just walking by garbage, how can I pick, how can I care for the earth by just picking up a piece of garbage that I see? How can I? tune into what the land, you know, my sister has gotten really into just tuning into what the land around her house needs. And all of a sudden she has vegetation showing up. That is what her body needs. And there's mm. just this, this wild relationship there. And so I've just been more aware. I wouldn't say that I'm yeah. working really hard and, and I'm not uh, for good, bad, or otherwise I'm not a huge, um, I'm not out there as an environmental advocate, but I'm aware of the fact that we are we are nature and that if if nature isn't healthy we're not as healthy as we can be 
so what's this what's this relationship this symbiotic relationship between me and nature is something i'm working on oh so beautiful something i'm working on too and uh i love that you brought up um both of those things and so and the hippie thing i mean i had something going for the day affected a lot of change and they are like really happy people so i'm not sure that's the worst thing yeah i'm happy to lean into the hippie side of me too yeah. um but Jen, I, I know we've covered a lot here, but I know it's just the tip of the iceberg for all that you do. So I know that some of our listeners are probably going to want to follow up with you and perhaps look at take a look at more of your work and or work with you. So share with the listener, if they did want to follow up, what's the best place that they can go? Mm. Um, you'll, I'm assuming I'll send you some uh, links that you can put in the show notes if right. you'd like to do that. So I've yes. got a contact form that they can fill out um, if they'd like to get a hold of me. My Instagram is the, the place social media wise that I spend the most time on. You're right. I do have a website. It is, it's old. It's my blog. Um, and I'm in the midst of reconstructing that. So I would say Instagram is probably the best place, but feel free if you want to hear a little bit more of my personal story, uh, the Jennifer is my website and you can get a hold of me through there too. So, um, yeah, that would, those Wonderful. would be the best. Way. And your podcast, give oh, a nod to your podcast. Yes. Yes. My podcast, how could I forget? <laughs> yes. My podcast is the whole shebang. So I, I am on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, everywhere that you can listen. And we're really focused on topics around personal transformation and uh, the framework of the feminine and masculine and um, conscious capitalism and leadership and things like that. And would love to get a follow for anybody who's interested in learning more and just uh, connecting in that community there. Yeah, amazing. Well, I have definitely become one of your latest podcast fans. I'm going to binge listen to the whole thing. I was <laughs> scrolling through all of the, the topics. I'm like, yes, got to add this one. Yep. Want to listen to this one too. So I have a feeling or you're going to be in my ears a lot. <laughs> Jen Bray, most of the podcast, the whole shebang, intuitive transformation architect, coach, mama, leader, and so much more. Jen, thank you so much for being here with us and our listeners today and sharing your infinite wisdom with us. Mm, Annie, thank you for having me. This was a genuine pleasure. I appreciate it. All right. With that, that's our show for today. Thank you for listening to The Life and Money Show, the show all about helping you to create a meaningful and intentional life by design. And just like Jen talked about on today's show, a big part of that is coming into alignment and integrating all the parts of yourself, the masculine energies, the feminine energies, and coming into full view and alignment with your authenticity, whatever that means for you. And it doesn't have to be this these big sweeping things. It can be just these little moments each day, these little decisions where you're coming back to yourself, coming back in touch with yourself. As Jen mentioned, um, we are going to include links for you to follow up with her in the show notes. So you can find that at lifeandmoneyshow.com. And of course, for more information about how to invest with us here at Good Egg, create passive income and build wealth for your family, go to goodegginvestments.com. All right. And finally, if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend. Uh, these kinds of conversations are super special, and but they're things that we don't often talk about, and it sometimes it's hard to talk about. And so if you're at that point where you got a lot of value out of this conversation and you know somebody out there who could benefit from some of these same concepts and the, this conversation, please share it with them. We would absolutely love that as we continue to collectively ripple out our impact together. Till next time, remember that your financial journey is a lifelong adventure and we're here with you every step of the way, not just for the money side of you, not just for the life part of you, but all of you. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time. <music>